fiction versus reality. Personally, I have always been a fan of Tom Clancy's. He portrayed the Soviet Union, Russia, and China as realistic adversaries to the United States. Jack Ryan, his titular character, fought against terrorism, fought against Cold War nemesis and enemies without any hesitation, but always grounded in reality. And that's why Tom Clancy was always an amazing writer, has created 17 novels that are bestsellers and five Jack Ryan films. Amazon picked up Jack Ryan season one, was a great season. It was realistic, it was gritty, and it showed the reality of war and terrorism. So, season one was great. I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was a great Jack Ryan story. Season two, whoa! That's not how the force works. Before I start venting, go make sure you subscribe to the channel. That always helps. World hopping and jet setting, flying to London to take out a terrorist, that's believable. You're not known how much time has passed and how much time Jack Ryan had to go and do this, but let's assume he had a couple of weeks to take down the terrorist. Realistic, sure. But it was episode eight, the final episode, that completely decided to wrap up the show very quickly and get the season done and over with on a high, high note of success and victory. And that's where it fell flat on its face. Watching episode eight started out good. And then I just simply said, what the heck is going on here? With a lot more expletives than I'm saying here because I was enjoying the season so far very much. What am I talking about? I'm talking about jumping into a helicopter that is already in Venezuelan airspace. Three Black Hawk helicopters flew in to rescue hostages that were found in the prison camp. All right, they flew in low. They stayed below the radar of the Venezuelan Air Force and they picked up the hostages. They would have beelined straight out of there, but no. That's not what happens. In the episode, they say, let's go down to the presidential palace, right downtown Caracas. Are you kidding me? So I guess they have to use the force. Good thing Harrison Ford's already told someone before, and we can just Photoshop John Krasinski's face on, that that's not how the force works. What's this? Floor plans to the palace. My guess is they got Greer on level one. Look at this shit, man. I'm in. You already ruined my Greer, so what the fuck? People are counting on us. The galaxy is counting on us. Solo, we'll figure it out. We'll use the Force. That's not how the Force works. Radio the Peralta. Tell them we're taking a detour. Presidential Palace. And don't take this the wrong way. I'm a huge Tom Clancy fan, but this makes no sense and would have never made it into any Tom Clancy movie ever. Why? Because Venezuela has an air defense system, one of the top ones in Central and South America. And here is what actually would have happened. Flying into Caracas. Okay, Venezuela maybe, but into Caracas, the capital of Venezuela, the country with one of the most advanced air defense systems, until those have been completely suppressed by cruise missiles and drone attacks, would have been suicide. And they would have done it completely differently if this happened in a Tom Clancy movie. There is no way that a Black Hawk helicopter could have taken off and flown to downtown Caracas and taken on the presidential palace. Wouldn't have even made it close. And why? Because there was no setup for what happened and how the army could have defected or protested against the actions of the president. As a matter of fact, it is shown throughout the entire season and in episode 8 all the way through to the end that the Venezuelan army is backing the president. They are defending him in the palace and they would definitely activate their air defense systems and take down a Black Hawk helicopter that is flying in unidentified into downtown Caracas. Had it been an MI-8 that was a Venezuelan Air Force MI-8 that was hijacked by the CIA that was used to carry out the clandestine mission of landing on the roof, believable. Had it been another helicopter that was perhaps hijacked by the CIA that was a presidential helicopter that was used to transport Jack Ryan and his team down into the palace? Possibly, but they would have still had to go through air identification. But a US Black Hawk helicopter flying 
into Caracas, landing on the roof of the presidential palace. While the president is still in power, while the army is still backing him, there is no bloody way. And this completely ruined what I thought of that season. That one last episode where everybody rushed to tie up the loose ends had completely broken the flow and the energy that was developed in the previous season and the season up until that point. All right, if Jack Ryan himself, being an analyst and not very technical, he would have said, I want to go and take out the president. The CIA officers and the Air Force and the pilots should have said, all right, we're going to do some suppression of air defenses first, or we're going to go bribe the air defense folks to make sure that we can fly in, and then they could have flown in. But what happened is completely, completely ridiculous. I have no idea why Amazon pushed for this, but that still does not work. It is completely unrealistic and goes against everything that Tom Clancy has ever written or has ever produced. All his video games, all his books are grounded in reality. This reality is what makes it interesting, compelling, and shows the challenges and the battles of different social systems, different militaries, and different mindsets of different armies. Here, the helicopter has plot armor. It's got to fly in because Jack Ryan's on board with his team. They can't be hurt. They can't be killed. They can't even be detected. They're flying right above a group of folks who are protesting down below and right above the army and land on the roof of the presidential palace with no one noticing. Come on. I'm really not into venting, but in this case, I am venting. Really, what should have happened is what was shown at the beginning of the clip. Fly in and you've got a Black Hawk Down situation. Why? Because the Venezuelan Air Force and the Air Defense is one of the best in the Western Hemisphere and definitely one of the best in South America. What have they got? They've got the Russian S-125s. They've got the Tor M1s, all of which have a range of between 100 to about 40 kilometers. You want to get even closer? Not a problem. They've got air defense systems with the Igla shoulder-fired missiles. They've got a few hundred of those. Throw a couple of people around the city and they can take down helicopters that might be flying in. On top of that, they've got the Israeli Barak systems, the Israeli Atom systems. But that's not all. For long-range defense, they've got the F-16As. That's right, Venezuela has F-16s, made in the USA. Not a lot of them, but they've got 16 of them, and apparently they're still worthy of flying around. On top of that, Russia has not been sitting idly by and has supplied them with Su-30s. That's right, Su-30s. These are the upgraded versions of the Su-27s with improved radars and capability to detect helicopters or other aircraft. But that is not the cherry on top. The cherry on top are the two divisions of the S-300 VMs. Remember when the United States and most of the Western world was opposed to Russia selling Iran the S-300 air defense system? Well, there was no such protest when Russia shipped two divisions of those to Venezuela and those were set up in Venezuela to protect its territory. As a matter of fact, there's one just outside of Caracas, protecting Caracas and its airspace. With a range of 200 kilometers, the S-300 VM could have easily picked up and taken down a total of 48 Black Hawk helicopters, all at the same time because each division can track and target 24 aircraft. So this is where I'm completely thrown off, and unfortunately the lack of realism is what ruined the episode for me. Now, tell me otherwise if you disagree. This is what it's all about. It is all about opinions, but I do get to enjoy shows here and there, and I was enjoying Jack Ryan very much. It was a pleasure to see a Tom Clancy series come back to life on Amazon not a full-length film after the disastrous Jack Ryan movie that came out, but uh, this was good. John Krasinski, great in his role. But come on, seriously, that last episode? Why not just fly in Superman or Captain America? Get them to land on the roof in the middle of Caracas and take out the president because that's pretty much what happened. Jack Ryan, Tom Clancy series have been based in realism. Harrison Ford played him extremely well, and it was gritty, and it was realistic, and it was believable. I really hope that Amazon rethinks their next 
season and brings it back to reality. If John Krasinski wants to be a superhero, everybody's saying for him to be in Fantastic Four. No problem. Perfect. Be as stretchable as you want to be. But if you're going to be Jack Ryan, be realistic. I think we all deserve that. But that is just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments.